This video will cover the rm command, which is used to remove files and directories. We'll start with an overview of the rm command. By supplying dash dash help to any command, you will get a list of all the available options and a short description of them. If we want a little bit more information, we'll use the man command. And here we'll get a full description of the command along with each option. The same options that were displayed with dash dash help are listed here along with some examples and a more lengthy description of each option, such as dash dash force, dash i for interactivity, dash lowercase r for recursive, and as most commands have, dash v for verbose. Using the which command, we can find out which directory the command is installed to, in this case, the bin directory. With an RPM-based distribution, we can use RPM-QF on the output of that which command to find out which package RM is distributed with, in this case, core utils. And then if we like, we can supply the output of those two commands to RPM-QL, and that will tell us a list of all files that are provided by the core utils package. Next, we'll look at real-world examples of how to remove files. First, let's look at our directory. We have a few files and directories here to use in our example. We'll see that most of our example files start with the word file, followed by an integer. We also have a couple of directories, and later we'll look at some files that begin with a dash. Inside these directories are other files file 1 through file 10. And later we'll look at removing these files as well. So we'll start out by simply providing rm with a dash v which stands for verbose and i which stands for interactive. This will cause the rm command to prompt you. In this case if we type in y and hit enter that will confirm that we want to remove that file. And if we just call the rm command without the dash i option, we'll see that it just removes that file without prompting. Next, we'll look at how to supply a range of file names. In this case, we're going to use the curly braces to tell rm that we want to remove any file that ends with 3 or 4. And we'll see those two files were both removed. And now we'll create another file called file8 with the touch command. And then we're going to supply another option, this time a capital I. And this stands for interactive once. And then we're going to use an asterisk with our option here. This is a wildcard character. So this will match any file that begins with the word file. The dash capital I option will prompt you if there are three or more files intended for deletion. Next, we'll look at removing directories. Well, first, we'll just try to remove that directory. And we'll see that we can't. And the reason for that is because there are files underneath that directory one. Now, we could go and remove those files with the rm command first. But if we supply the dash r for recursive and the f option, which is force, we'll see that every file underneath directory one was recursively and forcibly removed. And in that case, we've been able to remove directory one and any object underneath it. This time, we'll use the same option, but instead of just supplying directory two, we'll tell it that we just want to remove the items underneath directory two. We've done that with a slash asterisk, that wildcard again. And this time, Every object underneath directory2 was removed, but not directory2 itself. Next, we'll look at removing file names that begin with a dash. Now, if we just try to remove, in this case, the file name dash foo, we'll see that rm tried to interpret that as an option. 
And in this case, we got an error because that is an invalid option. So if we see in the man page, you can use the double dash option to escape any file name that begins with the dash. So this tells RM that the following is not a command option, but rather a file name. And we'll try that one more time. This time we'll use the dot slash notation. In this case, we're going to remove the file name dash bar, but instead of using the double dash escape option, we're simply going to type in dot slash dash bar. And we'll see that file was removed. And lastly, we'll look at what happens if you try to remove the entire root directory as root. So we're logged into this system here, and you'll see by the hash sign on the prompt that we're logged in as root. Now, I must say, do not attempt this on any system unless you know that it is a system that you can completely trash, which is what we're going to do here. So we're going to recursively and forcibly remove the entire file system beginning at root. Now, you'll see that RM is smart enough to say, uh, are you sure you want to do this? So you actually have to supply an additional option, which is the no preserve root. And that will tell the RM command, yes, I do know what I'm doing. I want to destructively remove everything on my file system. So we'll see what happens when we execute that command. Every object underneath the root directory will be removed. And Linux has no problem doing this. It will continue to remove it until everything is gone. Now RM is running out of memory at this point. So although the command itself has been removed, the command itself is still able to be carried out. So we'll see any command we try to run is not available on the system. LS is not available under the bin directory because the bin directory itself is gone. So again, we do not recommend that you do this to any system unless you have complete control over it. Maybe in our case, we used a virtual machine. If you would like to do that, it is OMG if you accidentally do this to, let's say, a production system.